So I'm going to introduce my our very first pitch. This comes from Kathleen Rockefeller and Willie Rockefeller pitching Adventure. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kathleen Rockefeller. I am a co-founder of Adventure Virtual Reality Education. Um, a little bit about myself, I got my degree in elementary education from LSU, and I also have my master's in curriculum and instruction from UT here in Austin. Um, I've taught kindergarten, first grade, and fifth grade at Del Valley ISD, which is just a school district here, kind of east of Austin. Um, and I've been an instructional coach in the district there for three years now. And my name is Willie Rockefeller. I'm Kathleen's husband and co-founder. And I also happen to be a VR producer with Hybrid VR. I've been producing uh, branded VR content for uh, about three years now. And I also uh, co-own Originator Studios over on the east side, which was Austin's first VR arcade. Yeah, so our passion for education and VR really collided. Um, when we noticed that VR wasn't really being used to its full potential in K-12 schools. Um, so in my experience teaching and now getting to observe and coach teachers, I really noticed that there were a few problems in the learning environment of schools. The first really being student engagement. Um, if students aren't engaged with the content that they're learning, they can't learn it. Um, in a recent student survey, only 50% of adolescents reported themselves as even feeling engaged while in school. Um, they also really struggle to comprehend and understand the content that's being taught. Um, if we think of just Texas last year, only 46% of our fifth grade students scored at a meets grade level performance on the state science test. To get a meets grade level, they would have had to score to 78% or higher. So only a little less than half of our fifth graders are doing that. Um, they also struggle to retain information from year to year. And I believe this has a lot to do with teaching being, very, a, being a very one-way transfer of knowledge um, from the teacher to student. And from the student side of that, um, consuming information doesn't always coincide with actual learning. So at Adventure, our mission is to provide K through 12 students with interactive VR lessons that is specifically aligned to the state curriculum. Our goal is to make that technology accessible to the schools and to provide a software platform and um, uh, content um, that is uh, also aligned to the curriculum. So how this would work is that you would have, um, in a classroom, you would have a rotation-based system to engage the ent entire class. So that would be four to six headsets in, say, a VR lab. And you would also have students in groups in the same room. And they would rotate. Um, and all that content would be provided by Adventure. And so Willie and I are really passionate about a few reasons of why we think this will be a very effective um, way of learning for students. The first really being um, that VR would be that difference between learning and acquisition. I think that's a really good analogy for um, learning through VR is the language acquisition theory, which many of you probably know. It basically says that babies and toddlers, they don't learn language. Um, we don't teach it to them. They just acquire it um, by interacting with language all around them from day one. That's kind of what VR would be for our students. Um, they're acquiring that information by interacting with it. Um, it also promotes complete engagement, which we mentioned before was a big issue, um, lack of engagement in schools. When you're in an interactive VR experience, you kind of forget that it isn't real. You're engaging with content in a very meaningful and purposeful way. And another great thing about VR is that the possibilities are endless. I think you know that you know, we can put a student into any environment. We can make them big or small. And that really helps students really understand some of those uh, difficult um, visual and spatial concepts. Another great thing uh, about us is that we really uh, value the teacher's time. Uh, we, don't want uh, we don't want teachers um, looking out for, spending hours looking for media and trying to weave it into their lessons. We want to provide a complete product that they can have the, that they know that is um, standardized for what they need to teach. 
So we mentioned a little bit about how we came to this idea. Um, and from there, we really wanted to focus in on proof of concept. And we garnered a lot of interest from teachers and administrators um, by presenting a demo experience at the annual conference for the Texas Association of the Gifted and Talented. We also presented that same experience to the board of directors for the Science Teachers Association of Texas. And need, need, needless to say, they loved it. Their first question was, is, how can we get this into schools and when? Um, and another, uh, the, the next step was um, some key partnership opportunities. Um, and we've talked to some uh, local uh, software developers as well as uh, hardware companies to uh, try and make this a seamless integration into the school system. Yeah, and so right now we're really trying to develop the beta program, which would be a unit for fifth grade, the Earth and Space Science Standards. And we do really want to get that pushed out to schools even this year, um, this school year, so that we can gather some data um, and make adjustments to the curricula as needed. And we're really looking forward to using Project Innovate specifically to develop that beta program um, to kind of organize our thinking around it and to make some, um, to kind of network um, specifically in regards to development. Um, from there, we really want to develop a complete curricula for fifth grade science, eighth grade science, and high school biology. In Texas, those are the three grade levels that take a state science assessment. So from an administration standpoint, um, those are very high priority. Um, and then developing a complete curricula for all grade levels, third through 12. And um, in Texas, we have our own state of, set of standards. So then even aligning it to the national standards, which many states use. Um, and we're looking forward to using Project Innovate to gain partnerships and to scale the company so that it can impact as many students as possible. Thank you. Thanks. All right, stay, stay up on stage for a minute. Yeah. We're going to open this up to a Q&A of our panel of judges to ask a few questions. So I'll ask you one. Um, on your VR content that you have, is it interactive? For it's, different it is interactive. In the class? It's, it's solely interactive. Yes. Is it interactive with each other, like multiplayer? No, um, it can be, but uh, the, the beta right now is just one person at a time interacting with just the content. OK. So I'm sure as an educator, you've actually heard the whole questions about screen time. Um, yeah. And teachers and probably the school administrators are asking about that. Um, how do you explain to them that VR is not falling into that trap of those concerns about screen time? Yeah, so that is why we would also provide what we're calling supplemental content. Um, so you're not inside of the VR experience the entire class period. Um, maybe five to six students would be, and the other students are engaging in um, different activities, reading, writing, speaking. We know how important it is, especially for our English, English language learners, excuse me, to, to speak with each other and um, build that language. How do you deal with uh the speed at which VR technology is advancing, right? You might develop this curriculum and six months later the platform's out of date. So how do you uh, adapt to that? Yeah, good question. Um, so we're developing everything with uh, Game Engine, uh, Unity. Um, so that, um, that content can be developed and ported to multiple headsets. So as the technology um, uh, evolves, that content will just basically need to be changed with the controls and um, that sort of thing. So. That's why we want to really focus on getting the right content out um, to the schools. So when you've created the content, um, is it all set up as a goals-based set of content, or is it gamified? How are, you, how are you getting the achievement in there for the, for the learners? Yeah, so we do want to embed some um, assessments like within the content so that um, the teacher would actually be able to see how the students are doing and um, get feedback on their progress. Um, yeah. There would also be gamified portions. You know, it would, you know, it would fill all those buckets um, with, with the different lessons. To, you know, there would be sort of a war reward system for um, you know, completing a game or you know, it's, you know, we want to take advantage that VR is also fun um, and, and that encourages learning. Great. Well, thank you. My wife's thank a you. my wife's a high school teacher, and she would absolutely love if her kids yeah. could 
be in VR and she would get a break for half the day. <laughs> I'm sure that's how it's gonna work. Wow, that was a high bar. Great job, guys.